Hi there! Um, welcome to my retro protection unboxing, I guess it would be, or showcase. I hope you like the new setup that I got. I think I find, I'm like 85%. This is how it's gonna be like. So if you recognize anything that's different in these videos, it's because I have my garage setup all completely changed up. I built up this new um, <laughs> showcase shelf, uh, which was my buddy's. Unfortunately, he moved to Japan and he left a bunch of stuff behind and I took um, from this thing. Um, I also took his uh, PlayStation 3D TV <laughs> and I never used it up until like maybe this past year because I needed more monitors set up in my um, in my home office. Um, but yeah, uh, I think I did an earlier uh, showcase of what I got around here and all the little trinkets that I have and I hope it makes sense. It's this, this is normally stuff that I really really enjoy. Um, I did move some things around like my wheel is down here now and I put my my lovely Dreamcast right there um, and I added some I added all my other con consoles right over here and I have some mini consoles down there. So I have more consoles out of the box now instead of in storage and now I've set this place up in a way where it's much easier to just hook up power and then like an AV connection and hook up to either two of these monitors or even this third one that I have right here. But it's way easier to do it now and I'm <laughs> really happy that I'm capable of doing it um, because I was playing Chrono Trigger on the OG SNES under Sonic right here and I was like damn this thing works perfectly. Um, right now uh, Jet Grind Radio is playing off of an Xbox 360 um, with a uh, a Marseille M Classic, which is a graphics enhancer, uh, so it looks completely smoothed out down there. Um, I have here Power Stone running the Dreamcast. Dreamcast, you might hear in the background because it's kind of noisy. <laughs> I need to I need to mod it so the fan you won't hear the fan or the disc uh, be as loud. But that's running Power Stone right now. Um, so yeah, this is a optimum setup that I have right now. Especially this is also this serves that. Uh, well, the other half of this space serves as my home office too, so I finally have my own li little apartment. I joke around with <laughs> with my wife about. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think I think it works pretty well. Um, so that was earlier in February. This is the latter part of it now. I do have some pickups um, that I want to show off that I am excited to uh, because I found this really great uh, vintage or retro store um, on a vacation I took last week. So. Um, yeah, but I'll get to that. Uh, the first thing I wanted to go over is my retro protection shipment that came in earlier this month. Um, I did touch upon it a little bit in my last video, and I showed some of the um, some of the things that, that I that I bought. Uh, the shipment is pretty large, um, so uh, let me let me show you the box. Again. Um, big old honking thing right here, <laughs> um, and. And the reason, the reason it came out uh, in a really big box is because I have console protection in there too, not just, not just games. So I have this huge stack of games that I want to protect, protect and, I'll, and I'll unwrap this box um, and, and unpack what's in there. And I double checked to make sure that all the items are in there and, and yeah, we, they're all in there. So thank you uh, to, Ga to Dan Godkin from RetroProtection.com. He is my games protection like guy that I always ask for um, for certain items and so he he normally gets me uh, pointed in the right direction on what I need for the particular items that I need so um, because not every not every little like if you see the stack here not all these games are exactly the same dimensions and size so there is some customizability and you know some some things to tinker with in there so um yeah thanks again to dan uh <laughs> he got me in a pinch and uh yeah i was i was really fortunate um that he's very responsive and he was able to help me out uh with a lot of stuff anyway so um i'm just gonna show off what i need so um if you don't know uh games preservation is very important to me and i feel like it should be more important in the eyes of most people uh especially gamers themselves uh because of the lack of <laughs> immediate preservation that is in the industry itself. Um, there are certain um, people in the gaming community, in the video game community, that try to preserve the earlier histories of video gaming, especially the history from like generation one all the way to like generation seven around that range. 
um, because around generation six, seven is when the digital age of <laughs> video gaming kink is coming around. So like right now we're in the midst of it where digital sold games are, are far, far outselling like physical copies of games nowadays. And that's, that's just the thing, like that's the progress of, of technology and gaming in general. And which is which is fine. Like it's actually more convenient for some people. It's better for certain businesses that they take on this model. Um, but at the same time, this trend, since the technology is moving so quickly, and through the transition from a physical-based medium to a digital one uh, was so fast, a lot of our old, like vintage games, um, are losing their history. So that's why I feel like video games preservation is very important. Um, there are some people in the gaming community that preserve magazines, um, specifically like your old EGMs or Game Pros, uh, Game Informers, that type of thing. And so they archive a lot of that uh, because a lot of that history is completely gone and not reproducible anymore. <laughs> it's not like a digital game, like your God of War or something like that. You could just download um, whenever you want. Um, so like a lot of that stuff, the history is lost, the context is lost, um, the artwork is lost, <laughs> like a lot of it. Like I don't know if you know this, like some of your recent like kids or whatever like that, but like games, like say I've, I've uh, this is Psychic Force 2012, among well, other things. Um, these games used to come with game manuals. And so manuals used to be, some, well some games were part of like the actual gameplay, <laughs> like in Metal Gear Solid's but like see all this artwork in here some of this isn't included into the when you actually play the game um, and so this this artwork is like completely lost unless you find an art book with it uh, that was made for this which I seriously doubt because this is like um, like a third-party title that was very obscure um, so that I mean that that just gets completely lost and thrown by the wayside and so I take it upon myself in my own video game collection to collect games that are not going to become like super obscure, but not like because I I can't afford and I can't I don't have enough room to collect everything. I just collect certain things. But what I do collect is is stuff that I appreciate, um, things that I have a nostalgia factor for or have childhood many yeah, memories tied to, or things that like I wanted uh, but I was never able to obtain because I was like a kid literally. Um, but at the same time, I try to get complete copies of things, like this record of Lotus Wars, um, to make sure it's preserved. So, yeah, uh, I, I think it's very important <laughs> to, to do that. I'm, I'm happy that there's a lot of collectors out there that share the same feeling uh, towards game collecting. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm glad. To, and, so, and so, in doing this, game collecting is hard because eventually a lot of this stuff here um, will is susceptible to to disc rot <laughs> for like your CD, your optical based medias, um, your uh, like your cartridge based medias, like your NES and SNES. Like either their batteries go out or they they leak onto the board. Um, there's a lot of corrupt um, memory uh, that's built into some carts, and that's like stuff that that is just the way it is with certain types of technologies. Um, disc rot is a big one with optical discs but I mean it's <laughs> discs last a lot longer than cartridges but I mean th eventually they'll still die out like I think there's like a 300 to 500 year lifespan on discs but it's like yeah <laughs> it, and it, that, that seems completely stupid as like a collector to worry about something like that but if you want to prolong something uh, I advise to get like some sort of retro protection so uh, the guy I use uh, from right here, retroprotection.com, Dan Godkin. Um, I use him exclusively. I haven't used anyone else uh, because he does such fantastic work and he has really great products. Um, I I buy for whatever I need, and they come in bulk. Some of his stuff, but some some of the other stuff he has like very specialized sizes for. Um, but what he provides is something really important. Um, and they normally come in like two different kinds of flavors here. Let me look. So right now uh, I have these two This is record of Lotus Wars and this is jet grind radio record of Lotus Wars is currently inside a plastic sleeve like this Which is great for like your titles that aren't 
um, you know, as valuable, but you want to keep uh, at least decent shape in. Um, I wouldn't say it's completely waterproof, but it's very water resistant. Um, and so, so this is pretty good. It's not as tough though as something like this. So this right here is a jet grind radio inside of a plastic sleeve or cover. I mean, sorry. So this is a cover and this is covered with a sleeve. So this cover is much more durable, sort of plastic. And uh, yeah, this is not as water resistant as say the sleeve, because the sleeve has a self healing or self sealing portion on the back of it, uh, for a sticker, something like that, to seal it in. Um, so, I mean, separately they're pretty good <laughs> by themselves. Like I just keep Jack Around Radio here inside of the cover because I actually play this pretty often. So I will continually return back to this, open it up really fast, uncover it, put it back in once I'm done, and there you go, it's done. Like, I don't have to worry about it. Um, but for games that like I don't do that too often, I'll just I'll just use a sleeve because it is kind of a pain in the ass to, to undo this sticker and then rewrap it again. It's kind of a pain, <laughs> to be honest with you. And I do that with some of my like Xbox games um, because I don't really need them as protected, but it's nice to have that extra protection on the plastic itself because plastic like it scratches really easy so and you know that because like you know the feeling of like a really brand new like jewel case feel and it's super smooth compared to like one that's been roughed up and scratched on the cover so often so um if it's a really expensive game <laughs> that i do what i do is i combine both so then i take the sleeve and the cover together so like this is project justice I think this is around 250 now, something like that, which is insane to me. Um, so I combine both and I put them together like that. Um, so there you go. So now it is much more <laughs> like this will survive a lot uh, of, of abuse if it ever has to come through that. I wouldn't say it's necessarily like cracked case resistant. But as, if you store it properly, like which you should be in the, in the first place, um, this will survive a lot of years. <laughs> so um, yeah, this I mean it's going to be water resistant and a pretty good protection for the cover, like overall. It won't get stuck too easy with stabbings or anything. So that's basically what uh, re the idea of retro protection. That's like basically the idea of this whole thing. Um, I like these personally, especially in these covers, because now. It's like, it looks better than what you originally have. It's not as dulled. Like if you look how shiny it is now, so it looks brand new. Uh, I'll show you later on what one of my console boxes look like when you put it inside one of these things. So it does that. Another nice thing is that like, um, it, it, I mean, it doesn't really apply too much on CDs, but like it'll stand by itself now if like you wanted to like display it like it's doing right now. Um, like for instance, There you go, I have Gravity Rush Remastered right there. And normally the PlayStation cover boxes aren't very good at like standing up by itself. But once you put it with this cover, if you see how sharp these edges are, it's a nice 90 degree display. So now you just leave it. And now it's like easily displayable. Um, it keeps things really nice, neat and tidy, which I like. So yeah, that's why I like it. Um, so these are my, my, like, these are the Dreamcast ones that I wanted to start covering. While I'm doing it, I'm just going to talk about the games while wrapping all my stuff up. I, I don't know if you, this is some content you would like to enjoy. Uh, you could look down in the comments or skip ahead in the chapters in order to get to the things you want to see. Like, he has so much, like, most, some of the box is just covered in all this, like, extra protection for the actual protection, which is kind of funny to me. So, like, I really appreciate that, that level of effort. So that's really nice. Uh, I'm sure it's to protect um, the box and state of, of itself because a lot of these covers, after you buy like a bulk of like 50 or 100 of them, it gets really, really heavy. Like right here. So they come, like this is the DVD pack. And he, he labels them, which is super nice. So then you know exactly what, like, uh, which uh, these covers are, are meant for. Um, so like, yeah, this is a pack of like 25. This is probably a good pound and a half right here of plastic. This other one here, this is a, this is the DVD sleeves, 100 pack. Um, so he normally sells like the bulk DVDs, CDs, and like the Blu-ray packs in like 
like I think it's like one five tens, twenty fives, fifties, and then you can just special order from there. I want to see a cartridge. This is my Chrono Cross that I have here. See how nice that looks with the, <laughs> the nice little protector in it. And this is super easy. Like uh, you can just take it off. Like it's 85% covered and then you take it out and there you go and then you pop it into your SNES keep playing it and then like once you're done with it just slip it back right in there unfortunately I don't have like the complete inbox of Chrono uh, Trigger sorry did I say Chrono Cross this is tr Chrono Trigger what the hell's wrong with me um, yeah Chrono Trigger uh, one of the greatest RPGs ever made um, so yeah you can you can bust it out play it and then like just keep using it whenever you really want to uh, and it's easy to store it, and now it's like safe. <laughs> I can build into this thing. Anyway, back to the on this stuff here. Okay, now these are the big ones. Now these are a lot more expensive because these are specifically for consoles. Uh, this is for my PlayStation 2. That thing is beat up to hell. <laughs> that box, I mean. Uh, okay, what else do we got in here? So these are really expensive for the bigger consoles because you obviously it's a lot more material. Um, so he normally sells these in packs, or actually you save more if you buy them in packs. So I bought a pack of four for individual consoles, um, and because they're heavy, they, they, the shipping is a lot less if you order them in packs. So if you have like a bunch of console boxes that you really want to protect, I'd suggest not ordering them, not ordering them individually, but in a pack of four at least. Um, let's see here. So this is my GameCube one. I don't know if that's coming up on camera. It just all looks blurry because I have to look through the translucency of the of the covers. Uh, this one is for my Xbox One, specifically my Cyberpunk one, and then my OG Sega Genesis uh, Model Two uh, Red Box. So, yeah, I have them all on the side there, so I'll pull them up when I need them. But I'm just gonna start boxing these up right as we speak, um, and I know. I I don't know if I'll get all of them today, but I want to show you ex at least an example and maybe talk about the games that I'm boxing up and maybe the history I have with them. Um, so I already started off with this guy. This is Project Justice. I bought this. I didn't initially buy, buy this right away. Um, I remember because it's like I remember this was at the the ending of life of the Dreamcast. And so uh, you could tell because it has the black strip <laughs> for the... For the game and like I didn't buy it initially and then like when people started to um, sell off their collections to buy into like the Xbox 360 era slash PlayStation 3 era um, I picked up a couple of these so my Project Justice this one let's see here this one what this isn't my original one that I bought though this I, I bought this off of like someone off of Amazon a few years later um, a few years ago actually because these were like these at the time they were like $90 so I was like why are these getting so expensive again so I bought it and um, now that everyone wants like Capcom fighting games like they're super hot right now especially this one which has been stuck on the Dreamcast for so many years uh, this one went up in price I think it's like around 250 <laughs> and that and that's like e even open so if you have a um, what do you call it yeah if you have a sealed copy like that's probably worth like a ton right now uh, to people that are willing to buy it. I feel like people aren't willing to purchase that one for such a high price because there's not as much of a... How do you say it? Like a... Um, um, like a nostalgia factor? Like, not a lot of people played that, actually. I think the actual uh, value... Or, or the actual games that are worth... Like, the really high asking price for some of them is like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. A lot of people played that. It is currently hot on the markets for uh, for the gaming scene. Like that, I mean, if if COVID, if if the whole pandemic didn't happen, uh, Evo 2020 would have happened, and and MVC two was Marvel two was basically on the docket, and it was like a it was like a tournament that the uh, some of the creators were were uh, pushing for. So like yeah, that was going to be a really cool um, scene, and I actually did see the price of Marvel two go up during that time because like the best place to play it was on the Dreamcast <laughs> um, because the, X, the, the Xbox and PlayStation 2 versions weren't as good and yeah it, it, even the one um, that's the HD remake or at least the HD version of it, it it's kind of weird it's kind of wonky um, 
So yeah, so those prices went up because you, they like original hardware. Again, the reason why I like, um, <laughs> how do you say? I like physical physical copies of games is because they even come with, uh, they, they don't have updates on them uh, for, for a lot of them. Or you could at least refuse to have uh, an update for them. So uh, an example of that is like um, if you buy the the last guardian for the playstation 4 on the playstation 4 disc that they sold at retail that is version 1.0 and so it you, you didn't know it at the time for for a playstation 4 hardware but that the game actually ran an uncapped 60 frames per second but because the game but because the game broke the playstation form in terms of uh PlayStation 4 in terms of performance, it never ran at that clip. Well, when you upgraded to the PlayStation 5, put it in version 1.0 from the disc onto the PlayStation 5, it ran a flawless 60 frames per second. Now, however, that's just without installing any updates. If you install an update to The Last Guardian for your PlayStation 5, um, then you then there's some crazy frame limiter. <laughs> So it looks terrible. Like I don't, I don't know. So, but if but if you have a digital version of that game, you wouldn't be able to do that because you never had version 1.0 um, from the disc, and they don't offer that on the PSN store or on the, on the PlayStation store. So you'll never get that back. Uh, just just letting you know, if you ever wanted to play The Last Guardian 60 frames, currently the only way to do it is to get the optical disc, uh, the physical media, and do that that way. So, all right, what else did I got here? So I'm going to. Wrap this guy here. This is Retro City Rampage DX. This is the uh, first print of this cover. Um, I bought this at a, gosh, I want to say half price books um, for like $40, $40-$50. Um, but when in act, actual fact, it should be like actually around $100. So I kind of scored on that one. Um, and I've been protecting it with a sleeve so far because I, um, the guys, the Dan at um, Retro Protection actually ran out of the covers. So I want to protect this one properly the right way. Actually, I should have left that sleeve on because I don't think I'm going to be playing this anytime soon for the time being. So maybe I'll do that. Okay, so I'll double protect this guy right here. All right, there's the sleeve, so I'm gonna put it right into the cover. I'm not sure if anyone recommends this. I'm not sure if Retro Protection re recommends it this method. This is the way I like to do it. So, to each his own. Uh, okay, so it goes in like that. And don't quote me on the survivability or the water resistance <laughs> on this stuff. That's just like from, from what I'm feeling out of this whole thing there's no like scientific you know proof or or example for this but from what i touch and feel about this product that's how confident i am of its resistivity so there you go double sealed up put this guy in right here okay so i i don't know what to what to what i want to do with that middle shelf or what to keep there specifically because there's some other random junk I that i may not want to have in there um but well, we'll see. It'll keep evolving as we go. So I really wanted to protect this guy. This is my signed copy of the devs uh, from Obsidian for their game, The Outer Worlds. Excellent RPG uh, in the vein of Fallout. I also have their, they also signed this for me, uh, Fallout New Vegas. So um, yeah, this is thanks to the devs. They got these signed for me. And my friend Nicole, she helped me with that. She also got me a neat little plush for the game and a shirt, which I use. And so I keep those there, um, but I didn't have a cover for this guy, so now I do, and I'm gonna completely protect it the way I want to. So I'm gonna get clear from this stack. Yeah, I hope everyone's doing good, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much like, I'm done with Outer Worlds for now. Uh, I I did buy the DLC, the Gorgon DLC, and I want to play that one. But that was on my my three or not my 360. <laughs> That's on my Xbox uh, One slash Series X that I get to use now. All right, so that's completely protected now. 
Same thing with my Fallout New Vegas, so they're going over here. All right, so I have here Godzilla for the Xbox, which I picked up recently. I wanted to cover it in one of these guys here. So the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube games, they're all relatively the same size. Um, very imperceptible the size difference between them um, other than the feeling I know the if you remember holding a GameCube case like they're the corners are far more straight edged compared to uh, the Xbox uh, game case and the PlayStation 2's which are more rounded like uh, yeah you definitely see that the edges are much more chamfered is that the correct term so slip it in right there nice and neat uh, some some of these just, to, just to get, just to tell you how nerdy I am with this. Some of these games I insert backwards, so I'll, I'll form the the cover case, and then I'll insert <laughs> from from the bottom up, uh, just because, just based on what the condition the game cover cover is sometimes. So there you go, nice and neat. I don't think I need to double cover this one because I actually started playing this one <laughs> recently when I installed it onto the 360. So yeah, that looks really cool. Uh, this one won't be going into that shelf, but yeah, at least I know that is tucked away safely. So I already have covers for, this is my Devil's Third for Wii U, uh, Shakedown, Hawaii, uh, that one's there. Um, I don't really need to cover this one, but I wanted to show you as an example how the fit is. So let's see. I think this is, like, I think I originally, so this Blu-ray, this Blu-ray slash Xbox One. I think I bought these originally for the original Ori. Oh, I'm sorry, the um, the Ori uh, and the Blind Force for the Xbox One. Okay, anyway, just to, to, to an example of what I was mentioning before. So I form the, the cover sometimes for certain games. I insert from the bottom up because it's safer that way. Um, so the cover art or something will get caught in the PVC plastic or whatever kind of plastic this is called. Uh, so yeah, sometimes it's easier that way. So just fiddle around with it. The worst part, the worst thing is that, you know, the worst thing you could do is like damage a pristine copy of something. <laughs> Here's my Resident Evil 3, all nice and clean. Uh, this Resident Evil 3 came from Gamefly, uh, which is fantastic if you've never used their, or if you never bought from their used game service. Whenever I buy from their used game service uh, or store, like they come out like, as if no one touched them. <laughs> it's, it's great, actually. Uh, I, I feel like a lot of their discs are super cleaned and uh, their covers for their stuff is really nice nice and neat. This is my Wii U Tokyo Mirage mission. So that's what this is meant for. <laughs> Which, yeah, it sounds weird, I know, right? Uh, but since this is an odd case, that's why he recommended this one. And yeah, see, this isn't gonna fit exactly but it's good enough, um, especially with the paper material that Tokyo Mirage Missions is covered in. Like that gets scratched and messed up really easily. But now that it's in this plastic case, the probability of that is really low. Oh, there's also this like, oh, there's like the film on it. So let me see if I can peel that off. See how satisfying this goes. Here's the ASMR for this. <laughs> Wish that was my day job shit. <laughs> you know how much money people would pay me for that thing? So I do really good, I think. There you go. Okay, so now that this packaging material is off, look how good that looks. Now this guy is protected. I could store it somewhere and I'm not worried about the paper artwork getting scuffed, mangled, uh, leaking any fluids on top of it. Like, uh, I'll be completely fine with that. Like, look how, look how snazzy that turned out. Anyway. Soul Calibur 5. 
and this is cool because it like it's <laughs> the pages of history from the whole uh, Soul Calibur series. Right here is the art book and this is the game. Uh, and I thought this was really neat, to tell you the truth. Uh, Soul Calibur... Actually, this is my least favorite Soul Calibur 2. And I still bought this thing. <laughs> That's how much I, I kind of like the the uniqueness of this, of this uh, packaging here. So, um, it's advised that I use the MVS kit. For the Neo Geo in here, because it's such a weird see. Because like, if you, I don't know if you see that it's not perfectly round. It's like a book, so this side is kind of curved, and so I didn't want anything smacking into this, and then like flattening it out. Because when you store it, things are going to start pressing on here, um, and I don't want that to happen. I want the case or the cover to take the brunt of that action. So, oh, this might be a little weird. Actually, this might be too much. I don't plan on playing Soul Calibur 5 anytime soon. It's kind of like, I hated Soul Calibur 5. It's, I, I, it's my least favorite one. It sucked compared to the other ones, but there you go. Um, because, I don't know, the, the defense was terrible in it. Um, they de-emphasized defense in favor of a more offensive rushdown style for a lot of the characters. And that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Because I'm like, what's the point of playing this? I could do that with another type of game. Uh, defense is a big part of Soul Calibur and they totally nerfed it for this game. That ain't got way too anime in this game. <laughs> like, like Vi Viola was just, oh, I hated her. Um, and, and they nerfed my, my main, who is Ivy. So I just like didn't want to play this game ever. Um, they also didn't have very good guest characters in this game. Like, I, I don't know. It wasn't very. It wasn't my my cup of tea. But which is fine because I could go back and play Soul Calibur two and Soul Calibur um, one if I ever really want to get that kick again. Okay, so I'm just removing this outer cover here. It's kind of a pain in the ass because I already sealed up everything. There you go. I don't know what it is, but it's like. The way that these covers work, it really shows off the shininess and I don't know, it looks really good that way to me. So there is sturdier retro protection out there, but like see like this is perfect width right there. It might be it might be too tall, it might be a little bit too wide, but I'd rather have that shaken up a little bit in there with a little bit of give protection. Um than having this thing crushed in a box, um, but yeah, there there is more, there is sturdier options out there, um, and I'm sure you've seen them. They, there's like hard plastic cases, which like you have to do a crazy slip cover for, but those are really expensive. Those are like twenty dollars each, um, depending on the size of the game you want, um, and those are normally uh, <laughs> what do you call it? Those are appraised versions of those games. Uh, which are like crazy, crazy expensive types of games, like your Panzer Dragon Sagas, your um, World Events types of titles, which you should be protecting that as much as possible. Um, so yeah, those those options are out there, but a more cost-effective one to me, <laughs> for my personal collection, is is this route. Um, it gets like eight, like I said before, 85% of the job done at maybe a tenth the cost of what you get with those hard cases. So, like, I'm completely satisfied uh, with this. So here's my Mass Effect trilogy, which I'm glad is getting a remaster for next generation hardware, but I like this one. Uh, it comes with like, if you see all the scuffs on it, it's like silverish uh, and everything, which I thought I was like, wow, that's actually kind of neat. Cause like the more that this gets used, the, the better it looks. It's really interesting to me. Like, I don't know if you notice that stuff. It's like the outside of a ship. The more it gets used, the better it looks. So, or like a truck. <laughs> so I thought that was really interesting. So Dan recommended to put it inside the Japanese N64. There you go. That's pretty good. This is a good fit. That was an excellent fit right there. So this will protect the paper version of this. It's really cool. Like, see, I'm now I'm noticing even more, more stuff out of here. See that big scratch right there? It's silver underneath all that print. So that's cool. I think that's really neat. So that's that one. Let's see what else we got here. Halo Wars. What would you recommend for this guy? Mario All-Stars. Uh, 
Okay. So this is one of the. Okay. So this is this was really cool find that I found one time. It's Halo Wars LE. This is the first adventure of Halo outside of a first-person shooter, and it came with all this neat junk here. Steelbook case, of course, a prerequisite for anything that's really cool in a collector's version of games. Like that's just like you have a you need to have that. It's a friggin' requirement, guys. <laughs> don't don't expect anything less. Um, but it came with like a cool uh, is this a Spirit of Fire like coaster? It's like rubber. It's really cool. And there's an art book and all this other stuff in here. I just don't I don't want to take it out right now because um, this is this is a this is a protection video, not a <laughs> uh, unboxing. I know. I just noticed that that turned out too. Which I'm like, that's not supposed to happen. Guys, this is like really satisfying uh, to me. There you go. That was a good fit. There's my Halo Wars limited edition. Neat, huh? All right, let's get all these smaller ones here. I have my SNES Classic and my NES Classic. They are the same exi same sized boxes, so they come in the same uh, size protector. Be because these boxes are in this display here, I don't want UV damage happening on top of these boxes. So I don't think I'm going to remove the film that normally is on the outside of these. I'll just I'll install these backwards and leave it the way it is. Uh, the boxes themselves already have UV protection for them. So if you don't know what that is, uh, <laughs> uh, UV will destroy the coloration of your your paper boxes and as well as your consoles as well. If you see Dreamcast, this happens a lot uh, because Dreamcasts are white. Uh, once they get hit, the, the outside plastic housing gets hit with um, UV rays, it tends to yellow. Um, and that happens to a lot of consumer electronic plastics uh, that are used. You'll see old computers like that. The front of the NES, this controller portion right here, that's starting to yellow now. Um, and there's ways to preserve or at least restore um, the original uh, white or off-white of the plastic. Um, there's many methods, actually I've seen a couple. And uh, the one that seems to use is a particular chemical agent used in a hair product that you use to coat the outside of it and let, let it sit in the sun. Um, um, there's also uh, a, uh, an ultraviolet uh, bath that you have to, to do that, that can work out as well. Um, but for games, like for print media, it's you get a lot of fading if, unless you keep it in boxes like this uh, when there's sun exposure or any type of like light exposure so if you don't like all like this mass effect and all that stuff like I plan on putting these in boxes uh, or on the shelf that's nice in, in a corner a darker corner but this since this is going to be out here in a display case with light shining from behind it I want to protect it like this so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna remove this outside plastic like what do you call it uh, covering for itself I'm just going to leave that on there, and that kind of scratched it already, but that's fine. So then it's kind of double protected itself. So I'm going to have it like that. And so I installed it backwards with the label on the back so that you won't see it when it's on display. All right, let's do it for the next one here too. So there's like, I mean, <laughs> people get... Real, like I'm very amateurish in this type of preservation aspect of this and but people could go really in depth about the science and, and everything or at least the justification of why they do certain things um, you might want to look into that yourself if you're getting interested into this type, kind of hobby for preservation uh, but this is the method I use I've used it for six years now for a lot of my older junk and it, and it works great like Every time I unwrap or want to play my video game and it's inside one of these covers or sleeves, I unwrap it like it's like another Christmas day. So, um, and it and it feels brand new <laughs> every every single time I do it. So those are those two protected right there that I also want to take care of here. So I have to protect that guy. Um, 
same deal. This is going to be on the display case. So it will be here. So there's a special cover for it. And I'm not going to remove the little film outside of the cover itself. So the first console box I ever bought, uh, I'm sorry, the first console cover uh, box I've ever bought from Retro Protection is for my um, my Nintendo Wii U, the Wind Waker edition, and I love that thing so much because go because it it does its job like it really like I have it packed in all these shelves and it's kind of dusty up there because I'm in a garage and the 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 plastic cover is robust enough to repel any of the dust and like, you know, dent hair or whatever just goes on into this garage. And whenever I bust it out of its cover and I install it back again to wherever I want it, it, it feels really good. <laughs> it feels like the, the, it's actually doing its job. So there you go, there's my retro protection for these guys right there. Okay, another ones I got are for the Amiibos. It's right here. So this is the Goblin Amiibo. For Diablo, which is so funny. I've never seen, uh, I mean, other than like Shovel Knight, I would never expect a Diablo to have an amiibo, which is so funny to me. <clears throat> I'm not a big collector of amiibos. I actually don't really like collecting them. They take up too much space, but certain ones are so kitsch enough and so unique enough to me that I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll get that one. Like uh, when Persona has the, the Joker amiibo, I really like that one. Um, I think that's unique. This one's also unique. Uh, oh, that, that actually fits really nice. I like the Metroid one, which I'm gonna uh, uh, cover right now as well. So yeah, there. <laughs> that's really cool. So it's not as clear because the film was around it, but again, like I said, uh, I don't want UV damage to happen on this guy too at the same time because it's gonna be hanging out here. And the cover doesn't take up a lot of space itself. It's pretty much the same space that the actual item is in, so it's perfect. Oh yeah, okay. Here you go. So there's my Guardian Amiibo and my Metroid Amiibo from the respective series of Zelda and, and Metroid. This is actually my first time um, buying box protectors for uh, the larger Amiibo. Um, Actually, this is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm actually buying uh, protectors for Amiibo in general. So that Goblin one was the first one. Um, but I want to preserve these guys too, since the Metroid one, it has this card back built into it. And that bends really easily. <laughs> um, if you ever owned like action figures, you know what I'm talking about. So it's the same deal. So I wanted to keep that this way. This one I actually might remove the film for this because I don't plan on displaying the, this Metroid one anytime soon. Um, but I'll, I'll see. For now, I'm just gonna leave it on because, like, I don't have any space back there. And so I chose the Goblin one because it's like one of the smaller amiibos that I like up there. So there you go. So it's now completely protected. See how much flex that is. So yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, the Guardian one is huge. I don't know if you see how, look how deep that is for this blister case or whatever you call these things nowadays. Uh, same thing with this one, I don't know if I'm going to keep the outer sleeve on from the box itself. Sweet! This is overkill. I would think this is a little bit overkill. This might be a little bit too big. I actually don't like this. It's too big. Um, and the space, like all this excess space up here that this occupies when I normally store it, takes up a lot of space. So, I don't know. I like this one, this is big enough. This one is, might be a little bit too much. So, we'll see. If I don't like it, I'll take the Guardian Amiibo out. Because I don't think that these are going to be worth as much as the Metroid one in the future. So I might take it out and like use this thing as a terrarium for something, I don't know. <laughs> Something stupid. This is my black GameCube. Uh, my wife's GameCube is right here, the purple guy. 
Now, we don't play GameCube as much anymore. Um, we also don't need a physical GameCube out here as much anymore because uh, I have here hooked up the Wii, the Nintendo Wii, which doubles up as a, a GameCube. So, so I, that's the one thing I love about backwards compatibility, guys. Like, it's fantastic. Okay, so we're gonna put this guy in here. This way, got it right. Back to backwards compatibility. I think it's really funny that I also have right next to the Nintendo Wii, Nintendo Wii U hooked up. And so it's really funny because like the Nintendo Wii is backwards compatible with the GameCube and the Wii U is backwards compatible with the Wii. So like the Wii is kind of redundant in that space alone, but the, the Wii is slimmer <laughs> than the GameCube and it fits. Uh, better in that space. There it is. Um, as long as I have that purple GameCube out there, I'm not going to be displaying this one anytime soon. So I'm just going to remove it right now. There we go. Yeah, and it might sound like I know, I realize how stupid this sounds to protect old video games. But, would you say the same thing to like someone that protects their car and like like the paint and, and the wax and everything that goes into it? I guarantee you it's cheaper to do to, go, to, to preserve this than it is a full on car, because I know I have a car that's like that. Uh, uh, or like a vinyl collection, like same deal guys. So, don't judge. If this may not be your thing, I know I realize I realize that for a lot of people it might not be their thing. But to me, and my crowd, my people, this is our jam, man. This is our shit. Yeah, this actually looks a lot better without that sleeve or that uh, outside cover. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it like this. Well, I have to because now I took it off anyway. Yeah, it looks much cleaner. So, yeah, much shinier. Much shinier way of doing that. Yeah, looks good. So yeah, this will this will stay like that. All right. So, I wanted to showcase uh, this is going to be the old box from 93, I want to say, 1993, that's my original Genesis box. This one is from 2020, of course this is the Cyberpunk Xbox One X edition. Uh, so I'll be doing that and like the GameCube was like the middle ground between the ages of like the materials, okay? So my, uh, let's do the latest one first. So the Cyberpunk one, I actually really like the design of this console. Uh, I feel like this is one of the more unique consoles to ever be designed, uh, even though the product may be suspect itself. And I was planning on keeping it forever for a while because I know it'll probably probably be going up in price, but uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon because of how poorly received the game was, especially for this console, uh, which is so weird because like why would you sell a game that could barely run on the console it's being premiered on? It's just the, f the weirdest thing to me. Um, and it's unfortunate. Like I was, I was one of the people duped into the marketing campaign for this game uh, to buy it and to get an Xbox One X, like this custom edition one, uh, because of all the marketing. It sucks that like I, I installed it on this system and everything and it, it runs poorly, uh, very poorly optimized. Uh, so I play it on my Series X and it works great. Uh, I barely, like I've experienced uh, crashes in that game, but not as bad as like how it was running on the Xbox One X. I could, like I, I don't even, I can't even imagine what it was like for the PlayStation 4 uh, users. <laughs> All right, so we have this guy here. There you go. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to preserve this one. 
uh, specifically, because I know it sucks in the future, or right in the present right now, that Cyberpunk is totally broken. And I don't know how many fixes it's going to take to win back uh, fans of the, of the series, or of the company CD Projekt Red. But yeah, that was all on them. They fucked up. But I know the creators and the engineers behind the whole thing, give it some time, they'll, they'll own up to it. And I wanted to at least celebrate that with them. And this is like a really cool way to do it. The console is so unique enough to me that it married its own little thing. Wow, that's really cool. So there you go. <laughs> I know the color yellow. So this is what it's like with that little protective part off. I'm going to peel it off right now so you can see the full effect of this. You now people are soured on this whole spectrum of yellow now because of how bad the game was released. Um, and it should have never been released in its state, to be honest. Uh, they should have delayed it for like another year. It's really cool, actually. See that? So you can see the contrast between like this kind of shade and the actual. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's like Christmas. Again. Every time. If you go to my YouTube, and then you see more... Um, I'm going to start doing more of these game preservation things. Or, I'm sorry. I'm going to start sh sharing more about games preservation. Uh, because there's a lot of nice channels out there that describe how they, a lot of users deal with it. Um, like, I haven't attempted some of them myself, because I feel like I don't have enough experience in some of them. But, uh, one of the more fascinating ones is that, like, say you have a cardboard box of a Genesis game, or an SS SNES game. Or N64 games, goddamn. <laughs> uh, and say the box is completely torn to shit. Um, or flattened or something like that. There are ways to restore that. Uh, I wouldn't say to a hundred percent, but at least if it, like the game, if the box itself was at like a ten percent state, you can at least get it back to at least like a fifty or sixty percent state um, using an iron <laughs> and, uh, and some other techniques uh, to get it flattened out and and uh, repurposed. Uh, cardboard box is also very effective in helping shape the box back to its original But you can prevent all of that by having it in one of these. That's what I'm telling you. So that looks that looks shiny That looks really cool Yeah, that looks really good. So yeah that is Xbox One X. Next is my old Genesis box from 93. Christmas of 93, I remember opening this. So there's many tears and like, it's been a while. This is more than 20 years old, this box. See, so many rips in this thing. I'm not gonna bother restoring it. I think it looks really good chipped the way it is. Uh, but I have this particular box protected it now from in storage and it gets moved around because I'm never getting rid of this this is one of my favorite Christmas presents ever that my my parents got me um, and I still I don't play it every day um, because it's really hard to find really good connections for the Genesis um, itself at hardware um, it's hard to play those games actually so I like it I like the system this is what got me into the Sega camp back in those uh, back in a few days. Okay, yeah. So okay, so this is the problem. So you see that how that's torn up and like that. I want to enter it in the box cover like that. I want to go it like this so there's no resistance coming out from the other side, so I don't tear it. So that defeats the whole point of this whole thing. Slide it in there, easy, easy peasy. All right, so I want to take off the cover skin or whatever this thing's called. This one feels like it comes off in sections. This is 
fascinating. I wonder why he started doing it like this. Out of all the console covers, this one's the one I'm most excited about because um, this is one of my oldest um, pieces of my collection uh, that I own from before, originally. And the one I have the most nostalgia for. Like, when I got this, um, I was in a Nintendo person for a while because of the NES and my dad used to bring that home and uh, he'd play that thing and I'd watch him beat Mario 3 and Zelda and, and everything and then that was like the last time he was really truly interested in video games um, and I was like definitely in that camp and then I was, this came out and I was like holy crap I love Sonic and I love Sega I love the attitude I love Streets of Rage <laughs> That like and, all, and the the Ninja Turtle game that was on this on this guy. Yeah, come on, Vector Man. Like that was another one. And I like the Super Nintendo as well. It's just like I like I have way more memories tied to this because a lot of my friends also had a Genesis, so we would play um, older, mature-ish kind of titles like Mortal Kombat because SNES didn't have blood in it. Oh, that's an SNES version of Mortal Kombat didn't have blood in it. It had like sweat. <laughs> Just so stupid. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. So yeah, that that one this this pretty much won me over to the Sega camp, and I was diehard Sega after that. Um, and I, I still it, that didn't mean that I didn't like the PlayStation and I didn't like uh, the SNES. Um, that's not what that meant. It's just like I loved, I, I prioritized and loved Sega stuff a lot more. Um, and you'll find crazy fans on both sides of those camps and all, all kinds, but I mean, when it comes down to it all, it just really all it meant was about the games. That's all it really meant. There you go. That looks really neat. And preservation doesn't necessarily just mean holding on to your old crap. Preservation could also mean preserve literally preserving memories um, like this here of this group of developers that signed this copy of here you could also preserve um, very valuable games like this copy of blasphemous um, as well as nostalgia for your own personal coin. say you don't have the capacity to preserve the stuff yourself maybe give your collection or donate your collection to a video game foundation um, such as the MAID that is here in Oakland, California, uh, which is the Museum of Digital Entertainment. Um, there's also a, a, the Smithsonian <laughs> that takes in uh, certain particular video games. There's also another video game museum out in the East Coast um, that is separate from the video game museum. Also, if you have a bunch of video game magazines, there's also the Vintage Magazine uh, uh, Archive, uh, which is located in, I think, Alameda, California. Um, or just donate to someone like me, or to someone you see on YouTube, like, I know a big one is probably like Metal Rock Jesus, uh, or Dreamcast guy, like those guys are pretty good at collecting. Uh, I don't know if they preserve all their stuff like this, um, but I'm sure some of them at least try to do a little bit of that. Um, but find out the YouTubers that you enjoy and reach out to them if you can't take care of your game collection in the same kind of way. That is my unboxing and showcase of the Retro Protection products. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a good night. Um, this has been really exciting to me <laughs> so for something I I enjoy thank you for watching I hope you learned a lot tonight um, and I hope you just I hope this inspires you to, to preserve some of your games to have some like little nostalgia and maybe show it off to some of your kids one of these days um, instead of family photos I, I've got these guys <laughs>